Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to welcome you to the marriage ceremony of Blake and Elizabeth. And uh, this is unique because um, we are in Kentucky and the bride and the groom are barefooted. So only in Kentucky, only in Kentucky. We do welcome you here this evening and uh, in the event that there is a loud train that comes across our background, uh, we're going to take that as a signal that uh, we should be praying more for the marriage of Blake and Elizabeth. And uh, we'll take a, just a moment as that train comes through, if it does, to, to pray for them. And in that moment, to pray for unity in their, uh, their relationship, the, their ability to communicate with each other and, and blessing on their home and uh, their family uh, that will be. We're gathered here today in the sight of God and these witnesses to unite Blake and Elizabeth in holy matrimony. As followers of Jesus Christ, they believe that God created marriage. In Genesis, he said, It's not good for man to be alone, and I will make a helper suitable for him. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. And so, Blake and Elizabeth, as you prepare to take these vows, give careful thought and prayer, for as you make them, you are making an exclusive commitment, one to the other for as long as you both shall live. Your love for each other should never be diminished by difficult circumstances, and it is to endure until death parts you. As God's children, your marriage is strengthened by your obedience to your Heavenly Father and to His Word. And so as you let God be in control of your marriage, He will cause your home to be a place of joy and a testimony to the world. And so as we begin today, let's pray together. Father God, we are so grateful to be in this place, celebrating in this uh, beautiful setting. What an incredible day, an incredible place to be celebrating this union of Blake and Elizabeth. And so today, God, as we uh, celebrate together, may you bless this celebration. May it be a time of joy and, and great hope for what is to come in their marriage. Uh, Jesus, we pray that you would be honored in all that we do and say. And we pray all of this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Mark, you've got one line in this, and it's a big one. Mark, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Blake? God has written in your lives a beautiful story of love and friendship. And he's beginning a new chapter today in that story. A chapter that's absolutely stunning. It's turned out beautiful. And what an honor it is to be a part of your all's wedding day. But as God would have it, only he could have originated a story like yours. Elizabeth, Caitlin and I remember back to those early days of youth group. You took care of everybody. <laughs> you were like their mom. You were there for people. You helped them through the drama of teenage years. Of course, you sang in the youth group, all of that. And Kayla and I both enjoyed spending time with you. You were one of the first that came and spent time in our home. We were grateful for that. And before we go any further, we're going to take some time to pray for you <laughs> silently as this train comes through. <laughs> all that you were special and you were unique and now your your marriage ceremony it, it matches all of that barefoot and trains it's incredible 
but we knew you were special and uh, that was confirmed to us just by your family. Um, the single fact that you survived as the only daughter of the Critchfield, of the Critchfield gang is um, that's testimony in and of itself. And uh, only God could be behind the story of Elizabeth Critchfield. Only God could have written your story. And so today as we celebrate what God has originated, and as the two of you enter an internal covenant that, that mirrors the love of Christ for his church, Elizabeth, my charge to you is this. Never stop letting God orchestrate the story. Because what God originates, God orchestrates. It is in this mystery of two people becoming one that we're often tempted to, to step in and take over for God because we don't know exactly what that looks like. And so today, as you, Blake and Elizabeth, stand before God and man and unite your lives together, becoming one, it's also just the beginning of this lifelong process of growing together in and through Christ. Blake and Elizabeth, God knew what he was doing in bringing the two of you together. It's easy to see your shared passions when you're together. It's, it's easy to see a growing love that is consistently yielding to one another. And it's easy to see the incredible potential that the two of you have as you encourage one another to grow in the Lord. So again, what an honor it is to have been a small part of your life and the story that God is writing. And now to be here as the two of you, let God prepare your hearts for the next chapters of the story. Just remember that what God originates, God orchestrates. And it's not our job to get in the way of that. Paul, with the help of the Spirit, wrote in Ephesians 5 a template for how God orchestrates this mystery of marriage. Beginning in verse 21, it says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Elizabeth, he writes to the wives in that passage that as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. As Blake follows the leading of Christ, loving you sacrificially, you are called to respect and submit to his spiritual leadership. This, perhaps more than anything, comes out of a relationship built on trust. Love and respect, the vision that God gives us for marriage that honors the relationship of Christ and the church. But as God orchestrates this story, let me offer to you one practical piece that has guided your story since the beginning. Prayer. Elizabeth, pray for Blake every day. Pray for Blake's dreams and his aspirations. But most importantly, pray for his relationship with Christ, that he would be satisfied in him. And never let there be a day when you... Never let there be a day go by when you don't pray for him. And uh, the last piece of advice is one that was given to us. Always work to outserve him. Make it be a competition. See who can serve each other the most. Because if you do that, both of you will find peace and unity in your life together as you grow more like Christ. Tony? Well, uh, Blake, it's just uh, endless, both of you. Um, I get to charge you, but... I want to thank you both, because um, this is an honor. Um, uh, I've had the chance to do a couple of weddings, and but never someone that I, that I love so much, someone I'm so close to. And uh, there's there's other men here more capable than I, um, so thank you. Um, I'll try not to, to be too uh, goofy. Um, but uh, but Blake, uh, you know, from the moment I met you, uh, spending time with you as your youth minister, um, see there's something special about you, and. Uh, and back then, you were just you were just number one in everything. Um, you just everything you did, you're just good, and you knew it. You knew. <laughs> and humility, you also humility. You're number one in humility. Um, no, it's been cool to see you grow in that humility. Um, but uh, but you really are. You, you have so many talents, so many gifts, and uh, and and but number above all that, the number one thing that stands out about you, and I think everyone would agree, is your passion. Your passionate guy. Um, about everything you do, and about the most important things, uh, about about Christ, um, about Elizabeth, and, and just about 
about your friends, about your loved ones. And, uh, and that's, that's what I want to talk to you about is your passion. Um, but, uh, you know, we can talk about the past forever, but fast forward to 2012 and uh, it was your first date, right? And it took a little while for you to warm up to him, but then it blossomed into where we are now. And, you know, everything has come so far from where we were before. But I'll, we'll keep this short and sweet. So I'll... Get to the point. Get to the point. He missed it. That was, a, that was an old song Blake liked. He's come a long way. He's come a long way from quoting music and movies, right? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. But Blake, um, I have three things to say to you. One of them is just what I've already said, you know, how great of a guy you are and how much I've enjoyed getting to know you. Um, but number two is, uh, is, your, is your new role, uh, this new life that you've got. And, uh, and I'm glad that, that Blake shared Ephesians 5 because that's exactly where, where I was leaning towards today. Because in that we see uh, the passion that, that God wants you to have for your bride. And, uh, and it's a passion that, um, that speaks volumes to everyone who sees it. And we need, and we need more men who are passionate about their wives. Um, I've, I've had to learn and, and, uh, and grow in that area and, uh, and learn how to be as passionate as, for my wife now as I was you know, when we were dating. Because it's easy when you're dating, you're pursuing her, you're wanting to just wow her and, and make, let everybody know how much you love her and keep doing it. Keep being passionate about her. And trains will stop because of it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but people will see your passion as a minister, as, a, as, as you serve as a minister. The most important thing you'll do is love your wife passionately. Because when everyone sees that, when, when students see that, when the, when the congregation sees that, they see that example and they're wowed by it. Because it's an example of something bigger too, as we see in Ephesians 5. You know, it's an example of Christ's love for us. So, so your passionate love for your wife, and to serve her, to love her, to protect her, to make her holy, people see that, and you can say, yeah, it's because of Jesus. Because Jesus shows me that love and enables me to love my wife with that same passion. And it makes people think, and makes them question what's going on. Something special is happening. So that's number two. Number three, because at Johnson I learned that you gotta have three good things to say or else people will lose track, and, and we don't want to lose track. So number three is where you guys are going together. That's why we're here today. We have this, this beautiful future ahead, and, and you guys have been gifted with a partnership the way God intended for you not to be alone, but to work together, um, to take each other's passions, um, to, to find ways that you strengthen one another, uh, the gaps that you fill uh, in the areas that you're different. And, and now you have this chance to be on a mission for God together till death do you part. And, and I think, um, you know, Paul talks about it in Ephesians 5 as he points to that higher purpose that we have, but I'm excited for you. And, and when you take what you've found, not only in Christ, but in each other, it makes me think of these words. And when we go and take what we have found to a dead world, we'll see it come to life again. And when we take what we have found to a hopeless world, we'll see hope come back. We'll see the heart of our world start beating again and we'll see the color come back into people's faces. And absolutely nothing will ever stop that. And mountains will move before us, and oceans will part before us, and the dead will raise before us, and the world will know that our God is a God that heals, that our God is a God that lives, and our God is a God that loves, unlike anything anyone has ever felt before. Because we are fearless, because we are his hands, and because we are his feet, forever and ever. I'm excited for you guys, and I can't wait to see what the Lord does through you and your passion and then your gifts and your love for each other. And now we'll do the foot washing. Um, I'm glad I've got this guy to keep me in line. Um, Blake and Liz, if you didn't notice, well, we've already laughed about it. They're barefoot, and, uh, and that's for a reason. Um, Blake did something cool uh, a while back when he, uh, he gave Liz a pair of shoes for her birthday, and he wrote on those shoes um, just the qualities that he, that he loves about her, the qualities that he likes about her. And, uh, and today, they've written vows, their vows to each other, on shoes that they're going to give to one another um, and that they'll, they're going to put on after they wash each other's feet. Um, so as they partake in this, uh, this sim symbol of serving each other, um, as you've been challenged to compete and serve one another daily, um, they're also going to take communion together and celebrate this, this new union, uh, that they're now one in Christ. 
Um, so, the reminder that we are standing on holy grounds. Uh, we're going to spend some time um, just with the Lord together and allow Blake and Liz to share this moment with him. Let's pray. <laughs> Our Father, we, uh, we thank you for Blake and Elizabeth and uh, just the special people that you have created. Uh, Lord, thank you for the, the chance that we've all had to know them, uh, to spend time with them, and, uh, and just to be blessed by them. Lord, we pray that as they begin this journey today, um, that this moment stands out in their memories, uh, that they'll remember how they, how they served one another by washing each other's feet. And when they took communion together, to symbol this union that you've brought together, um, that, that, that's something you could only you could orchestrate so perfectly. So Lord, we, we take this time to remember all that you've done in our lives and in the lives of Blake and Liz, and, uh, and ultimately in, in the blessing you've given us through Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen.
Blake and Elizabeth have chosen to commit themselves to each other today uh, through repeating uh, their standard vows and also the exchanging of rings. And so, um, Blake, Tony will lead you in your vows first. Blake, would you repeat after me? Yes. Are you ready? You have a voice. You have a voice. Okay. <laughs> I, Blake. I, Blake. Take you, Elizabeth. Take you, Elizabeth. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness or in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. And I pledge to you my faithfulness. And then Elizabeth, would you repeat after me? I, Elizabeth, take you, Blake. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. In sickness or in health. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. I pledge to you my faithfulness. Blake and Elizabeth have chosen to. Uh, exchange rings is the visual reminder of their vows. The wedding ring is a symbol of eternity. It's an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites two hearts in endless love. You get the rings? Do y'all like to turn and face each other? Wait first. And now, as a token of your love and of your deep desire to be forever united in heart and soul, you, Blake, may place a ring on the finger of your bride. Elizabeth, oh, you're, uh, can you repeat after me again? <laughs> Elizabeth, I give you this ring as a symbol of our vows and with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. With this ring, I thee wed. This ring, I thee wed. Elizabeth. <laughs> By the same token, you may place a ring on the finger of your groom. And if you would, repeat after me. Blake, Blake. I give you this ring as a symbol of our vows. And with all that I am, and all that I have, I honor you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. With this ring, I thee wed. All right. Well, are you guys ready? Are you still ready? You're tongue-tied. <laughs> Blake, you may kiss your bride. That is how it's done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I announced to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Blake Cohey.